Hi, I'm Mark. This is Mark's Tech Vlogs on YouTube, and today I'm going to bring you a review of the Apple Watch Series 4. Now, if you've been around for a while, you know that I've been using the Series 3 for about a year and a bit, and so this is an upgrade for me. I'm going to do a comparison video another time, so make sure you keep an eye out on his channel for that. But today I'm going to review the Series 4 specifically. Now the Apple Watch Series 4 came out in October 2018 and really it's the first redesign of the Apple Watch. In a similar way to previous models you have a choice of sizes, you can pick up a 40mm or a 44mm. In theory these are 2mm larger than the previous ones, however this is mostly on screen size and the actual size of the device is very similar. The design of the Series 4 has round edges which are softer than previous generations and it's also noticeably thinner. One side has the digital crown and the button, and now the place where it spits out water when you use the waterproof mode. The other side has a speaker. This speaker has been made bigger, so it's much louder than previous models. The bottom of the watch has the redesigned heart rate sensor, which is now made up of two parts, the electric and the second generation optical heart rate sensors. The watch has a huge selection of official and third party straps available, which makes it massively customizable. The really nice thing about this is if you go from a 38mm Series 3 to a 40mm Series 4, the straps fit just the same. The watch itself comes in a choice of three colours. You can choose to get the silver, the space black or the gold model. You also have a choice of materials depending on which model you pick up. If you pick up the GPS model, you can get the aluminium version. Or if you want to pick up the GPS and cellular model, you have a choice between aluminium or stainless steel. Much like my previous Apple Watch, I've stuck with the GPS model because I didn't think I needed the cellular connectivity. In terms of the inside of the watch, you have the S4 processor, which is noticeably faster than previous generations. It's also got built-in GPS, an altimeter, electrical and optical heart rate sensors, improved accelerometer and gyroscope and ambient light sensor. When it comes to memory, much like the previous generation, it has 16 gigabytes of memory. It also has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5. This Bluetooth has been upgraded from a previous 4.2. When it comes to battery life, much like previous generations, Apple claim it has an 18 hour battery life. And again, much like previous generations, Apple have been quite conservative with this estimation. What I tend to find is you can get about a day and a half out of it. The biggest change with the new Apple Watch is the screen, and it looks much better. And I particularly love the curved edges, which gets data right into the corners of the screen. It has the same brightness as previous generations, but this is plenty bright enough to see even in the brightest sunlight. In terms of durability, a lot of the reviews that I've read have said that the Series 4 is much more durable than previous generations. Having broken a screen on a previous Apple Watch, however, I have put a screen protector on this, and so far, after a few weeks of use, it seems to be holding up pretty well. Next, let's talk about the watch faces, because that is what you're going to see most of the time on your watch. One of the nice things about the Series 4 is that they bought across the old watch faces from previous models, but also added some that are just for the Series 4. These tend to be ones that take advantage of the bigger screen and the ability to go closer to the edges with the display. For me, I tend to run the infograph face as my daily driver because it has tons of complications and you can really customise it. This means I can look down at my watch and see the apps I want to access immediately, and see my day at a glance from the data I choose to display on the screen. There's also the stunning new vapour, fire, water and liquid metal faces which really show off that display. And then of course there's tons of the old watch faces that you can also still use. I tend to have three or four watch faces set up which I can flip between if I want to. One of the things Apple still haven't implemented is the ability to add third party watch faces. This is a real shame but actually there's probably enough watch faces to keep you going for now. Next, let's talk about fitness and the Apple Watch. If you watch my Series 3 review, you'll know that I was previously a Fitbit user, and so actually I use my watch quite a lot for covering workouts and runs. The built-in workout app covers you for walks and runs, both indoors and outdoors, cycling, elliptical, rowing and swimming, and they all work really well and sync back to the activity app on your phone. If counting steps is your thing, then you can also see the steps that you've done on the day and the distance travelled within the activity app. I tend to mostly use the workout app for running, and the stats on the screen as you go are great, and the summary at the end of your run is also particularly helpful. When using the Series 4 for fitness, I found that the new heart rate sensor is far more reliable than the previous one, and it seems to pick up my heart rate a lot easier. I've also found for outside runs that the GPS is really accurate. The other new feature that came with watchOS 5 was the ability to recognise workouts automatically. This means if you're out walking, or you start a run, or using the elliptical, and you've forgotten to start that workout, it will give you a nudge and say, it looks like you're doing this, do you want to track it? 
If from that point you choose yes, it tracks it from when it first picked up you did that activity. The main app you'll use to keep an eye on your fitness as the day goes on is the activity app. And of course you have those three rings to try and complete throughout the day. I particularly love this method of motivation and trying to fill up the rings and adjusting the targets is a really useful way for me to keep fit. If you click into the activity app, you can also see things like floors climbed, amount of steps taken and distance traveled that day. The other thing you'll be able to do eventually on the Apple Watch is take an ECG. But this function isn't out in the UK yet, so I haven't been able to test it. Some of the rumors online suggest that it will come with the next version of watchOS, probably in September. The other new function is fall detection. This will basically detect if you fall over and will then notify someone automatically unless you turn it otherwise. Now this function is clearly designed for older users or people with particular medical needs and so it's switched off by default. It is however a really useful function to have. The other thing of course you can do with the Apple Watch is accurately track swims. To do this you simply start the swimming workout and it goes into waterproof mode automatically. Much like previous generations this waterproof mode works really well and there's nothing else quite like it out there. Basically what happens is once you finish waterproof mode, you turn the digital crown and the phone vibrates any water in the device out of the hole. You can also activate waterproof mode just by swiping up from the bottom, which means if you're out on a particularly wet, rainy run, or if you want to shower with your watch, you can also switch on waterproof mode for that. Apple say it's waterproof for up to 50 metres. All of those features mean that the Apple Watch is a brilliant device for tracking your fitness and something that looks good for you to wear all of the time. There are of course other third party fitness apps and I'll touch on them later on in the review. But for now let's talk about some of the other features. One of the biggest selling points with the Apple Watch is that Apple say it will make you look at your phone less. This is largely done through notifications. Essentially any notification that comes through to your phone can also be mirrored to your watch. If you go into the Watch app on your phone, you can choose which notifications you receive. You can also interact with some of these notifications, such as replying to a message. The Watch also has the ability to make calls, and the bigger speaker means that your calls on the Series 4 are clearer than before. I found that being able to answer a call on your wrist and then throw it up to your phone is a really useful feature. In particular, it's useful seeing the call that's coming through on your wrist if you're in a meeting, because you can decide if you need to make your excuses and leave to answer it, or you can just zap it off rather than having your phone vibrating in your pocket. Another feature with the watch is that you can reply and interact with messages. You've got a choice in how you reply, you can dictate something to Siri, you can scribble the letters that you want, you can choose emojis or use digital touch. You can also pre-program in a whole variety of custom responses. These can be set up in the watch app on your phone. Next let's talk a bit about Siri. Siri isn't quite as functional on your watch as on your phone, but it's still good for really basic tasks. The raise to activate feature works really well, and whilst this rolled out to other models of Apple Watch, it works much better on the Series 4 than it did on my Series 3. Siri is great for coming up with hands-free reminders or starting activities, um, and asking to play music directly from your watch. Although if you've got AirPlay speakers across your house, you can't yet ask Siri to play things in different rooms. The other feature to mention when talking about the Series 4 is Walkie Talkie, because this was a new feature with Watch OS 5. In all honesty, unless you've got a lot of friends who use walkie talkie, it's largely a novelty feature. It's a little bit of fun, but for me it's not something I use on a day to day basis. So next let's continue talking about features and talk specifically about apps, because there are a ton of third party and native apps on the Apple Watch that you can use. I'm going to go through a few of those now, but if you want to know more about my favourite watch apps then I made a video about that a while ago. So first let's talk about the native watch apps, the ones made by Apple. Firstly, news is great for checking what's happening briefly. Reminders is particularly useful for shopping lists and just keeping an eye on tasks as you go. Timers, stopwatches and alarms are great for just keeping track of time and knowing when to wake up. And I particularly like having a vibration on my wrist because it's much more gentle than an alarm clock. Weather is also a useful watch app to have because you can glance at it and quickly know whether you need to put a coat on or not. Calendar is particularly good for seeing what's coming up in your diary and especially useful when used with a complication because you can just look down and see what's happening. One of my most used apps is the Wallet app, and I love the fact that you can pay with the Apple Watch. Being able to double tap and pay contactless for pretty much everything is incredibly useful, and I hardly ever reach for my wallet or phone when I'm out and about. The Music app and Podcasts app are both really good if you want to keep track of things that you're playing through your watch. However, to be honest, I mostly use the watch for music control, and tend to choose the music that I listen to from my phone or by using Siri. Either way, music controls are particularly good for controlling volume and skipping tracks and playing and pausing. The Home app is good if you've got smart home devices because you can easily turn on and off your lights. You can also ask Siri to do this from your watch. There's an app called Remote which is particularly good for controlling your Apple TV. And then finally Maps is really good when you're out and about. And especially if you need directions because you can get those onto your wrist so you don't look quite so much like a tourist. 
But what about third party apps? First let's talk about the third party apps that focus on fitness because there are lots of them out there. I've found apps like Reps and Sets, Gymaholic and Six Pack pretty useful because they do give you workouts you can do on your wrist so you don't have to look at your phone all of the time. Some people find Strava or Nike Run Club useful for tracking runs, but to be honest, I still prefer the native workout app. Really, that's just down to personal preference. There's also apps like MyFitnessPal available on the watch if you want to keep track of calories. So what about some non-fitness apps? Firstly, there's StoCard, which is quite useful for storing loyalty cards on your wrist. There's quite a number of shops over here that can't scan them, but you can type in their numbers. The other app I use a lot as a huge music fan is Shazam, particularly when I'm out and about wondering what a song is. The Shazam version on your wrist works really well. The other feature the Apple Watch doesn't yet have natively is sleep tracking, and so my sleep tracking app of choice is AutoSleep. Now I tend to wear my watch overnight and just charge it at the desk during the day, and so I find that this is particularly good for tracking my sleep. It seems to give me accurate results and breaks it down into different sleep levels. But those are my main third party apps that I use on a day to day basis. So what is my verdict of the Apple Watch Series 4? The Series 4 is a really nice redesign of the already brilliant Apple Watch. The thinner design and curved screen bring it right up to date, and the improved digital crown and bigger speaker are really nice touches. It's still great for tracking fitness, especially when it comes to swimming and running and various workouts, and it certainly makes you look at your phone less as you use the notifications on your wrist. And finally it's worth saying that with the S4 processor, everything is noticeably quicker than the previous generation of Apple Watch. If you're trying to work out whether to get the GPS or the cellular model, the key question to ask is whether you're likely to go out without your phone. And for me, the answer to that is no, even if I'm running, and so the GPS model is perfect for me. If you are likely to want to leave your phone at home but still be able to take calls and things, then maybe the cellular is something that you want to look at. All in all, I'm really glad I upgraded, and I love the new Apple Watch, especially the thinness of the design. I hope you guys have found this video helpful. If you've got any questions, do stick them below and I will try and answer those in the comments. And I'll see you guys again soon.